Welcome once again to the JLo Artist YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me on this artistic adventure. Today we'll be working with ink, pen and ink. So have your kneaded eraser, a number two or an HB pencil, handy, and any type of ink that you would like to use. But make sure that it's archival, that it's permanent, that it's black, and uh, and a smooth ink. I probably recommend a Figma Micron pen. They come in various colors and sizes. I like uh, the number two. Um, sometimes I'll use a two and a five. But whatever you feel comfortable with, have that nice and handy. And let's start doing some ink drawing. Hey, thanks for being here. I appreciate it when you come and draw with me. It's always a good thing. So the first thing we're going to start with is our number two pencil. We're going to set our ink aside. You can draw directly with the ink, but I would kind of wait and do that when you're a little more familiar with it, when you're more confident with it. So the first thing we want to do is establish our sizes. We want that nose to almost touch the left side of our paper. So I'm just going to make a little mark there and just say, this is where the nose goes. That's where I want that nose. Almost touching about half an inch or so away from that edge. And then that would leave his head up here, somewhere up here. That would be the top of his head. Maybe his ears would be up in there somewhere. But just go ahead and, and draw that shape in. So simple shape, there's his, there's his head. Okay, don't, don't have to worry about his eyebrow or any of that, just simple shape. And then his neck as it comes down. He's got a jaw that's kind of round. If you kind of put that jaw in, it's just below. So if this is the apex of his head, and there's an ear that's right there that's kind of this football shape. Straight down below that is where his jaw goes. It's just this rounded shape like that. And off about the center of that is his neck. So you can kind of come off of that. His shoulder. So once you've got kind of that shape, you can say, well, okay, there's an eyebrow and it's, it's about that far. If I, if I come straight down off of the ear towards the mouth there, somewhere in between there is his eye. It's just, I'm just going to make this little oval and just spot it to say that's about where his eye is. And I could be a little higher, a little lower, kind of up to you. That could be a little lower, I think. But if you go straight off of that, then his other eyebrow is about right there. It kind of curves into his nose. His nose kind of curves down. Maybe give it a little more space there. Off of his, his jaw over there, it kind of, there's a little bump that goes into his chin. You don't want to do too much, but like I say, we're not going to draw that edge anyway. We're going to let the stripes kind of denote that edge. And if you wanted to, you could say, well, he's got some hair in there. There's some hair that kind of comes up there. You can even put the edge of the hair in there just to kind of show where that goes. And that other ear, well, it comes off of here. It's, it's a little taller than the other one. It'd be up in there somewhere. I may even extend that nose just a little bit. Just to make it a little bit longer. And maybe lower that jaw a little bit. So when you look at your your initial drawing, you got to say to yourself, is something wrong here? If it is, if it feels wrong, it probably is. So then analyze it. What is wrong? Is there more space down here? Less space? You know, is that eye in the wrong place? 
and you, then just fix it. Whatever you feel is wrong, fix it until it looks more right to you. Nothing is going to be perfect. So this, this eye is in the wrong place for me. I've got to move it. Move it over and then erase it. Remember, draw it right and then erase it. Because if you erase it, you're going to lose your point of reference. Now, as far as the stripes go, um, nobody cares if they're exactly right or not, but you do want to get them close. So you may want to take your pencil and just throw in some guidelines for your stripes. So I'm just going to throw in a couple of these guidelines. Here's the center of his nose. And there's some little guidelines. Not that my, I'm going to stay with those guidelines, but they're just going to help me to see where those might go. So they're just little guidelines to help me. To kind of remind me how these go. cool thing is the stripes go right up his hair. That's really cool. And these are just, just to guide me. Give me the right direction that they go. And a lot of that you probably don't need. Because we're going to draw it with ink anyway. And everything that we've just drawn gets erased. So where do you start? I mean, when you're when you're done drawing it, and you've you've kind of figured out where everything goes. Where do you start? I get asked that a lot. Where do you start? I start with the emphasis area. I start with what's important. For most things, it would be like the face, and particularly the eye. If I'm drawing a human, I start with the eyes. I work to the nose, the mouth, and then you work out from there. If it's an animal, I, I do the same thing. I start with the, the eye. Because usually that's where your, your vision goes. That's, that's your, your emphasis area. Okay, you ready for ink? So, is that eye in the right place? Did you put it in the right place? So, a couple of things that, first of all, that eye looks very dark. But I do know there are some shines in that eye. Um, if we were to zoom into that eye, in fact, let me, let me slide him over and zoom into him really quick. There are a couple of things that I just know is going to happen. Let's look at his eye. You see a little bit of that light right up in there? This is reflected light. And there's a little reflected light on the bottom. Very dark in the corner and around the eyelashes right in there. First of all, that eye is very round. So I can say, well, if, if that's a round eye, I can put in a little edge here. And I, I know it's round. And I know that the top has some eyelashes that kind of come out. And it's got a round edge over here. So I can do something like that without having to actually draw that all in. Then I analyze and say, okay, is it too big? Is it too small? Uh, you know, do I need to add? Maybe it's too big. Maybe I want to go a little bit smaller. So I can change it from here. And I know it's very dark. So I can take and maybe hash through this whole thing. Just hash, 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 hash. Because I know it's dark. And now it needs to go a little darker. So maybe I'm going to just hash through some of it. Don't have to go through all of it. I'm just going to hash through some of it. And I'm just going to keep going through it with little lines, dots, and dashes until it's as dark as I want it to be. And don't be afraid to leave some areas out. 
So this little edge at the bottom, it's darker than that. I'm going to just go through and throw in some edges there. It's not completely black. But there's a lot of it that is. And so I can just keep doing little dots and dashes until it's what I want it to. Now, the other thing is you can say to yourself, well, maybe it looks a little darker, but I don't want it to go darker right now. When in doubt, leave it out. Because you can always come back and add more to it. So once you get it to that point, you think, okay, that's that's far enough for now. Then leave it alone. You can come back into it later if you need to. There's a little edge around there too. I'm just going to use these little hatch marks. Underneath is this, there's kind of like a little stripe and some little area there. I'm just going to hatch through that shape. Now, if you think to yourself, mm, what if I go too big or too small? Use your pencil and just lightly sketch in the shape of that darkness that's there. Even maybe that little line that goes through there, you can lightly shape, sketch it in and then hatch through it. I'm just hatching through that shape. Little dots and dashes. And you may think to yourself, well, it's darker than that. Yeah. So I'm going to go back in and hatch a little bit more in just the areas that look darker. There's one there. One there. Hatch through it. I'm barely, barely touching my paper. That's, that's another thing. that Oftentimes we press too hard with our pen. Number one, that's not good for the pen because it'll wear out the pen tip. Number two, you get a thicker line. Maybe you don't want that line that thick. And again, we can say, well, it might be a little darker, but for right now, I'm just going to leave it like that. So from there, I can say, well, I see this stripe that's up in there. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to I'm going to just pick out that stripe that's up in there. So I'm going to do a little bit more on the eye part there, just the top. You just pick up, there's a little stripe that kind of picks up here, goes up to his ear and his hair. So I can say, well, it starts up here and it continues on down here. And then it picks up, it goes a little thinner there and gets a little thicker here. It picks up about right in there. there's his first stripe. Now, it is darker than that, but for right now, that's where it's going to, I'm just going to leave it there. Then there's this little funny stripe that kind of comes over his eye. It looks like a little shoe or a little foot. So I'm going to put that in. I'm going to start with the edge. Then it goes to the end of the eye. And it looks like a little shoe. So I'm just going to do in this little shoe, a little foot, a little sandal, something. And then it goes up. And then it gets thin. And then it gets thick. And then it goes up by his ear and up into his hair. Well, there's another little part to it that gets kind of looks like a little, I don't know, bird head or something. It comes up, gets really thick there. And it goes up kind of in between them. And it goes up to the hair. And then it kind of goes up into the hair. So um, when we were first drawing, I taught you a feathered line where you drop your pen in or your pencil and you give a little fleck you do a lot of feathered line with this and you just kind of give it a little flick like this very lightly touch your paper 
this is how you do hair. Now, sometimes your hair is a little longer or a little shorter, and so you vary your line. And after a while, you can do this back and forth. You can be very thin. And some of them are going to go one way, some are going to go the other way, some are going to be short, but it's kind of spontaneous, and you, you kind of get into a rhythm of doing this, this feathered line back and forth. Now there's a little space in between the darkness of the hair, so I'm going to try to leave that little space out. I want to leave those edges like that. I want to leave them kind of soft and fuzzy. You know, while I'm up here, I might as well do that ear. And that ear is so light and soft and fuzzy. If you want something to look light, soft and fuzzy, less line, just leave it out. You can go in and just, just do a couple little edges like this, little dots. And this is the edge of that ear. That's all there is. Just leave it out. When in doubt, leave it out. Maybe a dot or dash. Here's a little dark edge in there. Here's a little darker edge that goes over the top. And there's some little hairs. This top edge is really light. Maybe I don't want to do anything in that top edge at all. So I could just go in and just do a little hatch lines here and there. Maybe a dot. But that's it. And if we got rid of our graphite, which let me let me get rid of my graphite here. Can you see the ear? Sure you can. You know where it is. Well, the inside of the ear is a little darker. So I might do a few little of those feathered lines in there. Just a couple. This is what I learned. Just You just don't have to draw everything. Just draw enough to get by right now, because you can always come back in later and add more. Uh, that ear is just about done. Yes, it might need more. If it does, I'll come back in and do more. But for right now, it's going to be just fine. And that is a subliminal edge right there. Later on, if you think, well, I need something in there, put a dot in there or something, maybe a couple of dots. And that would be enough to change that value to gray. There's, what did I do? Five dots? Six dots, maybe? And that's really all you need. That hair needs to go a little longer, so I'm just going to bring it out a little bit more right there. And it's darker, so I can add more line to it. The more line you add, the darker it'll get. Here's the top of that ear. I can see it, but I don't want to draw it in. I'm just going to use the hair in the background to denote my the edge of my ear. And there's the edge of my ear. And again, if I got rid of my graphite, you could say, oh, I see the edge of the ear. I didn't have to draw a line there. I'm going to continue to do that with all my stripes. I'm just going to try to pick them out. And no big deal if they're slightly off. Nobody cares. I'm just going to hatch through those shapes that I see. You can go thicker, thinner. But don't draw a line around anything. Just do those stripes and let them go. Because I'm going to come back into them anyway. Very thin. These up here in the forehead, because you're looking across them, are going to be very thin.
And it doesn't matter how which direction your lines go. You can even use swirls if you wanted to. That's not important. What's important is that they're there where they, they should be or where they need to be. You probably notice too that I'll start them in one place and then I'll go, okay, where do they end? Where do I finish them? And I'll go to the end and say, okay, that's, that's where it needs to be finished. That way I get them to where they're kind of where they need to be. Can be very confusing too so that's another reason I do it this way so that it's not as confusing to me because it is very confusing so every zebra has different stripes right you've seen Madagascar and how Marty, how he tells other zebras apart by their stripes, right? So my stripes aren't exactly right, but they're close. Now, if I had drawn a line around these, you'd always see that line. But because I did it this way, I can actually adjust them. I can make them thicker or, or even thinner at some points. And no one will ever know the difference. They'll never know that I messed up. Remember, there's a ton of things that you don't have to draw. So I'm really not following the lines, they're just guidelines for me. And eventually I'm going to erase them anyway. Here's a challenge for you if you want to. You do a zebra and hide things in the stripes. I will have to come back in and darken those. I know that. But for now, I'm just going to leave it like it is. And we're just using it as inspiration anyway. Oh, what do you do down the nose? The nose is all dark. But there's no there's no definite line, there's definite no definite edge. So pick out the nostril and just hatch through the nostril. So here's his nostril. And any other little dark areas, you can either do it this way where you hatch through them like this. And you say, well, I can see where his mouth is. It's a little darker right there. You can draw it in with your pencil first. If you're a little timid about drawing, that's okay. This might be your very first experience like this. And then just hatch through it. So I just did little hatch marks in the shape of that. I can do the same thing with all of this. I can go through and just hatch through it. It's all dark. There's nothing really light in here. Now if I get rid of my graphite,
But look at my edges. They're all there. I didn't draw a line anywhere. And it makes it light and thin. You still see my nose. But because I haven't drawn a line, I can say, well, that's really not the shape it is. So now I can go in and make it better. So I'm just going to come in and just it needs to go a little wider here and there. Now I'm just hatching through in a different direction. This is called cross hatching. And I can keep cross hatching until I'm happy with it. Go through different direction. You can turn and twist your page if you wanted to. I've learned to just twist my hand around until it's the way I want it. And you just keep hatching through it until you're happy with the way it looks. You can use dots. You can use little swirls if you want. If it's lighter, just leave it out. So like there's a little edge that goes along the bottom of his nostril, a little bit on the top, just leave it out. It is gray, so you can hatch through it. You can always come back in and add more. The more you add, the darker it gets. I'm barely touching my paper too. You're thinking, how do you get lines so thin? Just barely, barely touch your paper and you'll get a nice thin line. The other thing this does is it makes it so that your edges are not hard. There's no hard edge there, it's soft. I'm just gonna keep going through that until I'm happy with it. Or until you think you're done, because you can always come back in and do more. So I gotta keep some of those stripes going through there. I started this one here, so I gotta finish that one. These are just little zigzags, really. I mean, I'm not, there's not a specific direction you have to go. Eventually, you're gonna find your own voice too, just like I did. You know, I, I drew like Boris Vallejo for as long as I could. Then it was like, eh, you know what? I, I need my own voice. I need my own way. That ear, inside the ear, is quite dark there. And so I'm just going to hatch through it. And I'm going to try to go through. You can see the fur, the hair that's in the ear. So I'm going to try to go in the direction that I see the hair flowing. A little dark edge on his ear on that right side so I'm gonna throw that in and help his whole ear is dark I'm just gonna hatch through it real quick darken in that ear a little bit and then the center is quite dark add more line trying to go in the direction that that hair is flowing leaving those edges Edges are very important. Inside the dark area, I, you can do anything you want to. You can go inside and do, you can do little swirls or whatever. As long as those edges are doing what they need to do, it'll look right. The more line you add, the darker that gets. Where the white part of his hair is, you don't need much. You might have just a few little lines here and there. 
The dark part is the important part. And then in between, you think, well, there's a few little lines. We'll put a few little lines in there. Now the head is not done, but we've blocked it in. At this point, if you want, you can continue down the neck, or you can go back into the head and say, well, some of those stripes are a little darker, so I gotta go back into it, darken those up. Somebody was asking me about pen sizes, can you use different sizes? Yeah, if you've got a thicker pen, like sometimes I'll use, this is a number two, it says number two at the top. Uh, sometimes I'll use a five, this one's a five, and it's it's just slightly bigger. I mean, you can, you can look at the two and compare the different sizes. The five is just slightly bigger, but it, it'll give you enough of a line, a thicker line that you could do that and darken in things a little quicker. Sometimes I like to just keep the number two because I like the way it looks. So again, it's kind of up to you. You'll, you'll figure it out. You'll get your voice. It'll happen for you. I'm trying to leave the edges at the top um, a little spontaneous, a little softer, a little fuzzier. If they're all in the same, it looks like he's got a haircut. It looks, it doesn't look as natural. So have some flip one way, some flip the other. Leave some short, some tall. And it'll look a little more natural. And just keep going through it until it's as dark as you want it to be. I don't know if you noticed, but I missed a stripe. And that's okay. Had I put a line there, I would have been stuck with that line. But now, I can kind of move it over. Even though there's still some line in there, it's still a lighter edge. And you might have to put some in there anyway, just to make it darker. And it's thicker and thinner. You do what you want to there with it. But, but leave it kind of spontaneous. Leave that edge kind of spontaneous. If there is a little darker edge, a little dot there, or a little dash. Sometimes where the, the highlights hit are over that shine and so you or over that stripe, and so you may want to leave it not as dark. Say, well, it's darker over here and lighter over there. Just leave it that way. As I do these little stripes around the eye, I think to myself, oh, that eye is not as dark as it needed to be. So I can go back into it. And with some little dots or dashes or just a little, little more line, I can darken it up. There's a little shadow around it. Just put some dots and dashes. Like there's a little, a little wrinkle under his eye. I'm just going to do some little dots and that denotes that wrinkle. Those areas need to go a little darker. The more line you do, the darker the value. I'm just doing little dots in his eyes. Some of those lighter areas It'll just darken it in until you're happy with it, until it's the way you want it to be. Some of that area is in shadow. So I'm going to hatch through it, just a couple little hatches. And you don't even notice that grayness that I just hatched through there. Especially when you get the stripes done. the stripes that contour through him 
and create his edges. We haven't drawn a line around anything. And yet you see the edges. It's already there for you. There is a shadow that is on his the muscle around his jaw right here and around that that rounded part of his jaw. I'm just going to hatch through that to just show that that's where the muscle goes. Under his neck there's a, a little shadow there too. You can hatch through that. That little grayness there helps you to see that that muscle and there's a little bit more that comes up through there and hatch through that. So those little hatch marks, because we've already drawn the, sh the stripes, you just see it as a gray. You can hatch through that all you want. Like I can say it doesn't matter which direction you go. Just leave your edges so they're not spontaneous, so they don't have a line around the edges. In the back of your mind, just keep thinking. Can't draw a line around things. I just used that little hatch marks to create that shadow under his chin. And if there's any gray from like a shadow, just little hatch marks. Hatch, 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 hatch. And as you do, it's going to smooth out your edges. Like his little nose is getting smoother every time I go through it. A couple little hairs that come off his chin. If you want to throw those in, you can. Just a few. Very light. Use that feathered line. Just barely touch the paper and it'll look very thin. Barely touch your paper. This is a practice thing, too. If you're having a hard time with that, everybody does at the beginning. The more you practice it, the better it'll get. Barely, barely touch your paper. Pen will last longer, your line will be smoother and thinner, draw faster. You can also use dots if you're if you've tried it and you think, ah, it's just not working out for me. You can use dots. It's longer, it takes longer, but it'll work. Got to keep these uh, stripes going. He's got some that are really thin right there. So again, you can just hatch through any shadows, anything you think that is a little bit of a shadow just hatch through it So again, in the back of your mind, just keep telling yourself, I'm not drawing an edge around anything. You know, the stripes, nothing gets an edge. It all is going to take care of itself. All those edges, all those lines, just going to take care of themselves.
to just kind of get, help me figure out where the edge of my line goes. These little lines here just kind of help me figure out where the edge of his, his neck goes. And the more you go over it, the darker the value gets. Until it's the way you want it. Seems like the farther away you get from the head, the thicker the stripes go. It's not that important, the shape of the stripes, but you do want to be as close as you can to give that feeling, that bit of reality that you're looking at what you're drawing and emulating it and we haven't drawn a line around anything how much of this do you do i don't know as much as you want to until it feels right sometimes you have to keep, just keep going because it doesn't feel right yet but it will you'll get to that point where it goes oh okay that feels about right Well, that's starting to feel better. Look how sketchy though I am. The farther away from the head you go, seems like you can get a little more sketchy and then you just kind of fade out as it goes because your emphasis area is the head. You just go as far as you want to take it. And the cool thing is, is if you think, oh, the stripes are too wide or not wide enough, you can always widen them out. If you draw a line around them, you'll see that line, even through the, the scratching, the hatching that you're doing, and uh, it won't look as good. This way, you can expand it as much as you want to. It's easier to go bigger than it is smaller. And anytime you see little bit of darkness, let's go ahead and hatch through it. I think zebra manes are very cool. Oh, that stripe just carries on through to their mane. A lovely, lovely creature. Again, you just carry that through as far as you want it to go. There you have it. Zebra head. In ink. Last thing you do is sign it. And remember, art makes life better. Thanks for joining me. Have a lovely day.